At a time when information continues to come at us faster and faster, sometimes you need to hit pause and rewind. NPR's Throughline takes you back in time to the source of the news stories filling your feed. Find NPR's Throughline wherever you get your podcasts. Have you heard you can listen to your favorite news podcasts ad-free? Good news. With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app for free or go to amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts. That's amazon.com slash ad-free news podcasts to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Welcome back to yet another edition of Political Breakfast. Uh, Thanks for joining us again uh, this week. Brian Robinson, Darren Johnson, both here. So is our producer, Lily Offenheimer. This news broke late last week, and it was very familiar to you, Darren. Former Georgia GOP Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, the, the word started seeping out that he could possibly, possibly, he hasn't come out and confirmed it yet, but possibly be running for president under a third party bipartisan movement, no labels. So uh, what were your thoughts, both of you, when you when you heard this news? I made the bold prediction that former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan was going to cast a bid for president shortly thereafter he announced that he was not running for re-election. Let me tell you what I thought then and what I think now. So let's go back to what happened. I mean, this was a lieutenant governor who came on the scenes, came in with Governor Kemp, and quite frankly, I mean, you know, became a sort of um, controversial figure within the Republican Party because he was not afraid to speak his mind. Even before he went against former President Donald Trump, this is a lieutenant governor who was, had a very good open door policy. He was trying to work with Republicans and Democrats. But towards the end of his uh, administration, you saw him sort of just not going against the Republican Party that he didn't like. But he was kind of like setting a, a trail where he was kind of giving himself an opening, Lisa, to reemerge. And that's why I actually thought like, hey, this guy is too talented. If you listen to what he says in his body language, this is not going to be his last race. Fast forward to a few weeks ago, and shout out to Leadership Atlanta, where Pat Abshaw and Matif John is a great organization. I'm on the board of trustees there. And I had an opportunity to moderate a panel discussion by Josh Belafonte, who Brian knows, who's a well-respected Republican lawyer here in, in the state of Georgia. I think he represents the state on a lot of cases with Attorney General Carr. And Harold Franklin, who is a partner over at Keene and Spalding, a dear friend of mine, a well-respected attorney as well. And they had a robust debate about a lot of different sort of bills coming up for the legislative preview. But then Lisa, guess who our keynote speaker was to close the event out? It was Mr. Former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan himself. Mm -hmm. And his whole entire message, guys, you didn't, if you didn't know him, you didn't know if he was a Democrat. I mean, you knew he was Republican, right? Because he ran as a Republican. But he didn't really just attack Trump. He talked about the concern of the American people that both candidates had their issues. It was very sort of like bringing people together. It was a message full of prosperity and messaging. And then I said, okay, this guy is going to do something right now. Did I know he was going to do what he allegedly may be doing? That is with no labels. To me, that was the only smart pathway. I thought maybe he would sit this one out and because, you know, he wrote a book. He was promoting this book at Leadership Atlanta. And, and quite frankly, my classmates, Lisa, afterwards, black women in particular, you know what they said? Damn, that's a good looking man. And he's got some good <laughs> hair, right? And so the perfect so politician. Now, yeah. Perfect yeah. politician. And I know we've had him on the podcast. He was talking about his book. And so. I, I don't know if it will have any steam. I don't know if he's going to do it. I don't know if it will be successful. But I just want to go on the record for saying that I, I knew that moment. I said, this guy's going to run for president. And, and a lot of my friends, Lisa, mm-hmm. laughed mm-hmm. at me. A lot of my Republican friends <laughs> hanging out at an town golf club, Ansley, Men's Grill. I said, Jeff Duncan's going to run for president. They laughed at me. So now they're all buying me cigars. They want to <laughs> take me out. And, 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 and they, wanna, they, want, they want me to look into the crystal ball and make another bowl prediction soon. Yeah, I, I don't know, Brian. Did you know he was? This would probably happen because when he launched that GOP 2.0 campaign, um, you know, he just simply said, "I'm gonna work hard every day to remind Americans uh, the value of conservative politics." And and you kind of knew there was more in his future than that, right? No, 
I didn't make this <laughs> prediction at all, and I, I and I'll own that I that I didn't because what I said about GOP 2.0 is like I, I understand where he's coming from, I understand his point of view, but he is existing in a party that no longer exists, and the the magnification of the Republican Party is kind of a done deal at this juncture even in a post trump republican party mm. what the way he has changed it will continue i mean he he has changed the direction of it for for the long haul so there was no reforming the republican party mm. from the inside there was you know, folks who were thinking about that over the last eight years i think they kind of have realized now that you know those folks have got to figure out where they're going to go right are they going to be outsiders in their own party or are they going to be outsiders in the democratic party because they're too conservative really to be part of the modern democrat party too i think there's a lot of these folks who are in no man's land and that is the audience for this no labels party all of those folks who are in no man's land many of those nikki haley voters are in the no man's land for example Mm -hmm. Uh, there really wasn't on the democrat side a a no man's land faction. I mean, there, there, there are people who are against Biden. We saw that in the non-commit effort in Michigan, but you didn't see anything taken off with Dean Phillips or or any of these other candidates that was anything serious. But nevertheless, Biden's got a big problem within his own party. You're seeing black voters going toward the Republicans at rates higher than they ever have. You've seen a movement of Asian American and Latino Americans toward Republicans in recent years, making that vote a little more evenly split than it has been in the past. Both parties have an issue, and No Labels is a vessel for those folks who feel like they don't have a home anymore. But here's the deal, and this is what Jeff Duncan or anybody else needs to know. If your purpose is that you're anti-Trump, the third party is, I hear this more from Democrats than I do from Republicans in the media that I consume, the the Democrats hate no labels. I mean, it is a vicious hate because they see it as a vessel to elect Donald Trump, that people who in a binary choice would go to Biden, but don't really want to be for Biden, but they hate Trump. Now, all of a sudden, they've got a place to rest their vote, and then they can go vote down ticket for Democrats or Republicans, whatever their tribe is. And then at the top of the ticket, they can kind of throw their vote away. So the Jeff Duncan thing, if it is an anti-vote uh, Trump movement, it is in- inadvertently going to help Trump, at least according to the Democrats whose opinions I respect. I don't necessarily um, know how that breaks down in a state like Georgia or Arizona or Michigan, Pennsylvania, the places that really matter. But, you know, we do know that somebody like Jill Stein, who's running again, I think, is she the Green Party candidate? Is that what she is? Is that what she is so. there? Yeah. Yep. Uh, you know, Jill Stein probably played a big role in, in Donald Trump beating Hillary Clinton in 2016, mm. right? So th- that's sort of the macro look at this is a strong third party candidate would give people who would go to Biden somewhere else to go. That's sort of that seems to be the conventional wisdom. Well, Darren, he's neither confirmed or denied this yet. What, as a strategist, what what is this signaling to you? That, that one that his name is out there to begin with, and and linked to this no labels movement. Well, first of all, let me let me set the record straight. When Brian says black people are just flocking to Donald Trump, that's not true. Let me just <laughs> make sure I push back on that. You know, did he get? a higher number than expected back in 2016 and 2020. Yes. But I definitely want to go on a record for saying that, you know, this, this sort of mm-hmm. massive crusade that some Republicans want us to believe that yeah. African-Americans, particularly African-Americans yeah. Yeah, are going to Republican. It's just not happening. He's courting. Um, he's trying to court, but yeah, well, right. But well, but, but the thing is, is that he's, he's courting in a non sort of genuine way. And I think that trying to say that Biden is not doing anything for you. is just blatantly false. And that's what you're going to hear from the campaign a lot more. You're going to hear from the campaign, that they already got ads out right now talking about the Trump record. They're reminding us, Lisa, that this was the guy who literally was sued in New York for discrimination against black and brown people with housing. This is the guy who went after the Central Park Five viciously. All right, you know, this this is the guy who talked about African countries and that they were, you know, terrible and that they shouldn't come here. I mean, so you'll see all these things that they will come out to remind people that Donald Trump is not the best candidate for the African American or and I believe also Latino community. 
But let's go back to no labels. And I agree with B-Rob. Look, Democrats, we know what this is. This is nothing but a a mechanism and a vehicle to try to reelect Donald Trump for the White House. Right. I mean, we've been saying that since day one. And if you look at states like Georgia and Pennsylvania. Right. Just look at those two states. I mean, Georgia, we know it was less than 12000 votes. Pennsylvania was very close. And to Brian's point, if you start taking people away and giving them a sort of a kind of a third option, I think it hurts both candidates. But I think ultimately who they put up, which it looks like it may be Jeff Duncan, it's going to hurt Democrats and particularly hurt Joe Biden worse. Now, what's interesting, though, and I agree with B-Rob on this, Jeff Duncan spent <laughs> years sort of saying that, you know, Donald Trump is what drove him from one in the re- for re-election, that Donald Trump has hijacked the Republican Party. And, and Brian just kind of, you know, gave us some cover on that, right? That now this MAGA movement within the Republican Party is real. I mean, if you're trying to go against it, good luck, right? And so, for him to accept it, and I know as we taped this, he hasn't come out and said he would, I don't know what's changed. And if it's truly about basically making sure that Donald Trump is not being uh, not, not going to be reelected to the White House, which we know he opposed the president last time around, Jeff Duncan going up to no labels, I actually think helps Donald Trump. And so I hope that he hears this before he makes a decision, but that if that's truly in your core what you are against, and you truly stand for, you know, a democracy not being taken over again by Donald Trump, then going to no labels is just not not the best thing to do. But I will say this, Democrats, it, it has actually, um, you know, been put on our radar very soon. When we first heard about this, quote unquote, movement, um, I know that the party and Democratic campaigns took it very seriously. And so you're going to see. Uh, a lot of us coming out to really call this what it is. And that is, is that we believe that if this were, I think at the time we're taping, they've selected they're going to move forward without a slate of candidates, right? So we don't even know who the slate of candidates are going to be. And it, and, and it could change. You know, people could, could, could drop out. People could come on. But, uh, but ultimately, I just believe that Voters should be given a clear choice. And you're right. Jill Stein back in, in, in uh, was a Green Party candidate. And we've had Green Party candidates before. But to, to, to bring in this non-binary sort of way, giving a candidate option to the voters, and I agree with Senator Warnock, what he said on Meet the Press last Sunday, is that, you know, like Joe Biden is our guy. We need to encourage all Democrats and American people to, to look at him as their, as, their, as their next president. I do want to say here, when it comes to Jeff, because I didn't really speak to him specifically in what I said earlier, is if he got – hundreds of millions of dollars put behind him, and he was able to get into the faces of Americans, and he had a good team around him who gave him a message that a third party is free to do because both of the traditional parties, there are things they can't say. There are things that the orthodoxies of their parties require them to be in a certain position, right? A third party's got a little less shackles on them when it comes to messaging. They're, they have a little more freedom to to explore and kind of break through some of those those orthodoxies that that prevent change. Washington is broken and it's hard to make the argument as a Democrat or Republican, look, if I get elected to president, I'm going to make it different. I'm going to bring back civility. I'm going to bring back working across the aisle. We've heard that cycle after cycle and it's not happening. What we're seeing is it getting worse. And so somebody like Jeff Duncan, Theron's absolutely right. He is telegenic. He is probably one of the, the best-looking candidates for president that you're ever going to have on this side of Gavin Newsom probably. And, and, and that matters. I've always said it. That absolutely matters. It matters not just with voters of the opposite sex. I think there's a bias toward good-looking people just kind of across the board. And Jeff is able to articulate some of these things that could break through. It could make a difference. Uh, th- this could take off in, in some way. I don't want to downplay it just because third parties traditionally don't work. I haven't seen America this broken in the past. I don't. You, you look back at times of tremendous social change, like when the Bull Moose Party with Theodore Roosevelt came out in the early 1900s, that was a time of massive social change with kind of the end of the Gilded Age and the the income tax coming in, this huge class disparities. I think we're in one of those times of of change and angst right now where there is this opening for something to break through, particularly when you consider that Biden and Trump are 20 points underwater both. They both have 
disapproval ratings in the 60s and approval ratings in the 30s. So why wouldn't there be a chance for somebody who, who's fresh, much younger, much younger than the other two choices, and sort of the voice of a new generation? It's possible. It's never worked in America in the past, right? But third parties have changed America in the past. They've changed the direction of one or the other parties. And Jeff's got a chance to do that here if they can get hundreds of millions of dollars put behind that candidacy. It's going to be fun to watch if it ends up being him. Hey, y'all. I'm Mark Kendall. And I'm David Perdue. And we're the hosts of What's Good Atlanta, the new weekly comedy podcast from WABE. On What's Good Atlanta, we run down uplifting and unusual headlines from the universe known as Atlanta. And while we may not be journalists, we are comedians, and we'll be breaking down news and breaking down the stories that make you smile. We're just trying to see what's good, Atlanta. Episodes drop Fridays at WABE.org or wherever you get your podcasts. I get mine from a guy named Craig. Shout out to Craig. Mm -hmm. WABE. The world has changed from shifts in power to a mental health crisis. So with all this social change, how do we balance the human desire for empathy, the business need for productivity, and the hope to make an impact in our community? This is a new podcast, The Social Impact Leader. I'm Jeff Schinnebarker. Join me as we explore people doing work a little different. Available every Wednesday at wabe.org forward slash podcast or wherever you get your podcasts. W-A-B-E. Okay, so look, if you're Jeff Duncan, you literally said, "Hey, I'm not running for re-election in in, in Georgia because the, no Georgia was broken, right? Like he, he hated the politics of Georgia, and he wrote this book, and it, and it's the 2.0 movement. And so, I actually think that if you're Jeff Duncan, I mean, you probably have sort of positioned yourself to be this guy. But the thing that B. Rob said, at least I think, is so important is can they raise the money and the profile of these candidates quick enough for where you can really give the American people those choice? Now, look, it happens in marriage races, it happens in gubernatorial races, it happens in Congress, U.S. Senate, right? You know, you got people like a Tom Carper who's in Delaware, right? He's retiring after so many years, and you know, and, and people have reelected this man year after term after term after term because he's been affected, and yeah, he's gotten to a point now where he's older and he's decided to retire. And so there's always sort of this concern of wanting to have something fresh and something new. I mean, even our personal lives, think about it, right? I mean, we want that, we want that new iPhone. Or we want that new, that new golf club. You know, we want that new computer. And so I think that, yeah, there's always going to be that sort of mindset that like, okay, can we do better? Can we have something younger? I just don't think that if you're Jeff Duncan, you're really going to risk it all to really go out here and try to go against a trend. And as Brian talked about, it hasn't worked, but. I will agree with Brian. Jeff Duncan has enough appeal. He's suave beyond his physical appearance. I think he's a, he's a good counterpuncher. I've been watching him a lot on CNN. I haven't debated him yet. So he could be a person that can catch a little steam. But I think ultimately the money on both sides, the Republican side and Democratic side, the organization, the grassroots retail politics has already been created. The infrastructure is already in place. I just don't see it being able to have enough time to ramp up to the point where you can actually – you know, win an election now. But 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 I go back to the intent of this organization, Lisa. I don't think it's to win an election. I legitimately think that they are trying to take votes away from Joe Biden to make sure that Donald Trump is the next president. And that's why I have the biggest problem with the model. Not necessarily the candidates or who it may or may not be, but the model but actually, in which you're sort of launching yourself. That's the, that's the problem that I have. Yeah. And I, th- I think to Theron's point, that may be the outcome that hurts Joe Biden. I, d- I disagree that, that that's their intent. Uh, that's not the, the impression that I get. And I'm not an expert on no labels and the folks who are involved in it. But I kind of always got, had the feeling that they were more of an anti-Trump movement to some degree. Not positive. That's just sort of my sense on it. My question is this. What do they stand for, right? Where, where are they going to be on Ukraine? Where are they going to be on abortion on entitlement reform? Where are they going to be on how we deal with China as far as, you know, both parties have moved toward more populist stances when it comes to tariffs in dealing with the competition with China? Both parties have basically said we're not going to reform entitlements even though they're going to run out of money in 10 years and it's going to be a massive burden and consume an ever larger portion of the federal budget. My thing is, If you're going out there and your target audience is the college-educated voter who feels disaffected from both, a lot of them are are former Republicans who left the party under Trump. A lot of them are Democrats who feel like some of the more progressive voices don't represent their values and they seem as out of touch with reality. 
I'm in that group, you know, technically, demographically, that's my group. But it's a really small sliver of the electorate. And Theron is right. The money, the organization, the vast pockets of votes are going to be with the two traditional parties moving forward, even if Jeff decides to do this and he runs a fantastic campaign with a great message. It's still going up against a behemoth that has never, ever been beaten. Well, Jeff Duncan, we would love to hear from you, hear your thoughts. Although you have not yet confirmed either way, we still would like to chat with you and and catch up with you since you were last on here. So uh, that is an open invitation for former Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan to, to come back and visit us here on Political Breakfast. Brian Robinson is a Republican strategist, communications consultant, and former deputy chief of staff for Governor Nathan Deal. Theron Johnson is a Democratic strategist, public affairs, and government consultant, and most recently a senior advisor to the Biden Georgia campaign. Thanks, guys. What a week. It's starting to ramp up, isn't it? So uh, let's do it again next week. Sounds good. Y'all have a great weekend. Thank you, Lisa.